When you look at the current members of the Sun Belt Conference, you're going to come across three very dominant teams. You have Coastal Carolina, who last year made a name for themselves after they went 11 and 1. You have Appalachian State, who's won at least nine games in each of their past six seasons. And then you've got the third team, the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns. Formerly known as UL Lafayette before 2017, I wouldn't be surprised if the average college football fan doesn't really know about this team, or they only really know about them because they're that one school that's ranked in the bottom of the AP poll. To put it simply, the Ragin' Cajuns haven't risen to the national scene like Coastal or App State have. None of that is to say that Louisiana isn't a major up-and-coming team. In fact, these past three seasons under Billy Napier have shown the college football world that the Ragin' Cajuns are for real. In this video, I want to look at two things. How did this team get to the point where they have two straight 10 plus win seasons and are on pace for another? And why hasn't Louisiana gotten as much national attention as the Chanticleers or the Mountaineers? I'm Kevin Redfield from TWSN and the Dropout Sports, and let's get right into it. But hold on, before we get into the video, I gotta ask y'all to subscribe to the TWSN YouTube channel. Trust me, you're not gonna wanna miss out on all the great videos and the amazing shows that we have here. All right, bring back the music, and let's get back into it. Before the hiring of Billy Napier, the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns didn't have much of a winning history. That is, until Mark Hudspeth came in 2011. From 2011 to 2014, Louisiana had four straight 9-4 seasons and four straight New Orleans Bowl wins. But just as the program was gaining momentum, in came a roadblock. In early 2016, the NCAA found that a UL assistant coach had helped five prospects cheat on their ACT exams and had paid at least one prospect $6,500. This caused the NCAA to place punishment, which included 22 vacated wins from program history and recruitment restrictions. After 2017, Hudspeth was let go after three straight losing seasons, and in came Billy Napier. During his first four years, and especially in his last three seasons, Napier has created a team with a clear offensive and defensive identity. Levi Lewis has been at the helm of this very shotgun and pistol-heavy offense as he's been the full-time starting quarterback for the last three seasons. Although Napier's offense is more run-heavy than your average CFB team, Levi Lewis has broken multiple passing records for the Raging Cajuns, including being the first to pass for 3,000 yards in a season and having the single-season passing touchdown record with 26. As mentioned before, the ground game has been the bread and butter of this Napier coached offense. The previous three seasons saw this team being led by the dynamic duo of Elijah Mitchell and Trey Ragas, but it didn't take too long for Napier to find his new duo. Sophomore Chris Smith and freshman Montreal Johnson have teamed up this year to lead a rushing attack to over 200 yards a game. They both have very similar styles of running, but from what I saw, Johnson is a lot more of an agile and honestly complete back that I could totally see getting into the NFL someday. Not to take anything away from Chris Smith. The defense for this team won't wow anyone, but it does rank in the middle in terms of yards given up, and one key statistic to point out is that they only allow 19 points per game. This Ragin' Cajun defense is led by instinctive inside linebackers Farad Gardner and Lorenzo McCaskill. With a ton of junior and senior help behind these two, it's easy to see how discipline factors into their low-scoring defense. Coach Napier has said this season that he likes this team in particular because they're experienced and they have for the most part played together for the last couple of seasons. I do want to point out real quick, if you look at the way that this team has performed over the season, you're going to see a lot of close games with some less than competitive teams. This tendency is the one big knock that people place on this team, and to be honest, it is very baffling. Four of their nine games have been decided by four points or less, which is weird to think about from an 8-0 team that blew out Appalachian State by 28 points. Are they playing down to their opponents? Nobody can definitively say for sure, not even themselves. But I don't think that this is something to worry about from a consistently winning team, especially a Napier coach team that's won in the past. So I haven't been following Louisiana for the longest time, but from what I can tell from my research, the Ragin' Cajuns are stuck in this sort of limbo state in the extreme ways in which App State and Coastal have risen. Coastal Carolina has only had a football program for 19 years, and their rise has been the definition of meteoric with last year's 11-1 Jamie Chadwell-led team and that famous Mormons versus Mullets game. 
which was one of the most watched football games in all of college football last year. And on the other hand, Appalachian State has been known to be a winning football program, especially in recent history. Under coach Jerry Moore from the 1980s to the early 2010s, Appalachian State won three straight FCS championships and a slew of conference championships in winning seasons. Even at the FBS level, they've never had a losing season and they've always hovered around that 9-11 to win mark. Louisiana hasn't had either of those insanely unique stories. While they did beat a ranked Iowa State team in their first game of the 2020 season, the win came in week one, which at least in my mind makes it slightly less memorable than something like a later week win where the teams have more clarity and established team strengths. On the history side, Billy Napier has only made this team a consummate winning machine in the past three seasons. And while I mentioned Mark Hudspeth's teams did have those four straight 9-4 seasons, the rest of Louisiana's history is nothing like the Mountaineers. I could see the Raging Cajuns getting to the level of both of those teams. All it takes is one incredible attention-grabbing win to put Louisiana on the map. And even if that doesn't happen, I could see them winning for years to come under Billy Napier if he decides to stay with the program. On top of that, with conference realignment being the talk of the town this year, I wouldn't be surprised if Louisiana gets some consideration for a higher level conference, maybe even the Big 12. Like I said in the beginning, none of this is to say that the Louisiana Rage and Cajuns aren't going to be a powerhouse football program, but they have the tools and momentum to start to become one. Billy Napier has built an identity to this team that is only getting stronger and stronger by the seasons. Players like Levi Lewis, Farrah Gardner, Chris Smith, Macho Johnson, and so on are displaying an ability to win at all levels of the game, no matter how close their games are. The average football fan might only see this fringe top 25 team, but right now at this very moment, the Louisiana Raging Cajuns are undervalued, underrated, and are rising to the top of the college football scene season by season, game by game, play by play, and player by player. Thank you for watching.